I'm going to be teaching a topic this month that I'm sure is very dear to your heart. It's dear to my heart. It's on discipline. Discipline to reach your goals. But we're going to have fun. I'm going to teach you how to discipline yourself to go after the goals that you have in a simplistic way. I believe it's going to make sense and you're going to achieve those goals that you've stuffed in a drawer and don't even remember where they are. It is so important that you have a vision for your life. If you do not have a vision for your life, then you are just existing. You're just going year after year after year, just taking up space, not doing what God put you on this earth to do. And I want you to know, God has an assignment on your life. He created you for a purpose. You have not messed up too bad that God just wadded that purpose up and threw it away. No, He has a plan for your life, and He wants you to discover that plan. So... Research has showed that half of the people who set New Year's goals end up giving up on them by June. So at most they last six months and then they give up on those goals and throw it away. The good news is that half of the people who actually write their New Year's goals succeed. So I want to talk to you about how to be part of the half that succeed at accomplishing them. Well, first of all, it is very important that you have goals. Robert Schuller said, Goals are not only absolutely necessary to motivate us, they are essential to really keep us alive. That goes hand in hand with Proverbs 29:18, where it says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. You know what perish means? It simply means die. Where there is no vision, the people are dying. In other words, you're dying inside, you're dying in your emotions, you're dying and you're, you're just existing. Like I said, where there is no vision, you're dying. Well, I have made it a habit every year to set goals for myself, to set New Year's resolutions. And years ago, every single January 1st, I'd get out a piece of paper and I would write my goals. And they sounded something like this. Number one, um, get closer to God. I really want to get closer to God this year. Number two, I want to save money. Number three, lose weight, tone up, stuff like that. Well, none of those really happened because they weren't specific, they weren't measurable. I mean, how do you measure, number one, get closer to God? When there's no action steps, there's nothing broken down to explain how am I going to get closer to God. I mean, do you just say, well, one night in church I had goosebumps, so I got closer to God and I'll check that off. No, it's not measurable. It's not, there's, there's no goal attached to it. How can you get closer to God? So I want to share with you four tips to setting your goals this year that will help you accomplish them. Number one, your goals must be in writing. That goes hand in hand with Habakkuk 2.2. 2. It says, write the vision, make it plain upon paper. Why? Because written goals proves you're serious. It proves commitment. It also provides clarity. It's been said that goals that are not in writing, they're just wishes. But something happens when you actually sit down, get out a piece of paper, maybe a journal, and you write out exactly what you want to accomplish this year. Written goals proves you're serious. In fact, Mary Kay, the cosmetic guru, I thank God for that lady, she said that she attributed her success to the fact that every day she wrote the six most important goals for her to accomplish that day. She had a list, six most important goals, and if she didn't finish them, she carried them over to the next day. But every day, she had a vision for the day. That's what that is. Instead of just thinking of this big, gigantic vision for your life, it's a vision for each day. And I believe it's Vince Lombardi who said, men decide their habits and their habits decide their future. That's all about having a daily vision. So number one, your goals must be in writing. Number two, your goals must be measurable. If you want to lose weight this year, make it measurable. Say how much weight you want to lose. I want to lose 10 pounds by March 1st. Write it down. Number three, your goals need to be realistic. That is so important. So many times we set these unrealistic goals for ourselves. We don't accomplish them, and then we end up feeling discouraged. We feel like a failure. We never do what we say we're going to do. But that wasn't it at all. We just set an unrealistic goal. In fact, if your goal is to get closer to God, let's say that you break it down and you say, one of the ways I can get closer to God is by reading His Word. Well, don't just say, I'm going to read the whole Bible this year. That could be an unrealistic goal. If you look at your schedule and you decide that you've only got one hour a week to devote to reading, to just sit down and read, then it's probably unlikely that you're going to read the entire Bible this year. But you could set a realistic goal where you say, I'm going to read the book of Romans in January, and I'm going to set aside 20 minutes a day to just do nothing but read. That is a realistic goal. 
So make for sure your goals are realistic. And finally, number four, your goals must have a deadline. It is amazing how a deadline motivates us. They say that the most productive time in an office is the day before vacation. Why? Because there's a deadline and it's amazing. You get everything done. Not only do you get all your assignments done, but your office is clean and spotless because there's this awesome deadline <laughs> just waiting for you. I think about like at home, my mom, she could call me out of nowhere and say, I'm on my way over, I'll be there in 20 minutes. And I could have junk or clutter that's been sitting around for two weeks. <laughs> I'm just ignoring it and procrastinating. All of a sudden mom says that and there's a deadline. Everything gets cleaned up that fast <laughs> because a deadline motivates you. So you would say, I wanna lose 10 pounds by March 1st. That's your deadline. Now let me show you how to, how to apply these four tips in setting goals. Let's say that your goal is to save money. Well, it needs to be measurable, specific. How much money? $6,000. Give it a deadline. By when? December 31st. And then you break it down. You say, okay, then I need to save $500 a month or $250 from every paycheck. And if you add up your your paychecks, you subtract your expenses, and you find that you only have $300, well, it could be an unrealistic goal. It's completely unrealistic for you to say, I'm gonna save 500 every month. So don't set yourself up for failure or defeat or discouragement. Set realistic goals for yourself. And then when you're able to check it off, I'm telling you, it gives you confidence. It gives you that feeling of, yeah, I can do this. So make for sure you apply these four tips to setting goals this year. I taught a lesson on discipline, discipline to reach your goals. It's four CDs where I go in depth on how I have gone from being an undisciplined person, a passive person with hardly any vision for my life. I just kind of went with whatever people told me was a great idea <laughs> to becoming a person of discipline. And I believe this will help you in not only setting goals, but achieving them and then turning those goals into habits in your life. So order this, a four CD set, and I wanna challenge you today to get out a piece of paper and begin setting your goals. That's the weekly challenge this week, is for you to begin listing your goals, applying these four tips to it. Now next week we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about one simple step that will help you become a person of discipline. So I'll see you next week.